Hello, my name is Justin Rubio and I'm here today to tell you about a study we've conducted on the leucine which repeat kinase 2 gene or LAR2 which has recently been accepted for publication in human mutation. Now genetic mutations in LAR2 are the most common known cause of Parkinson's disease and this underpins its selection as a drug target. Genetic studies have shown that LAR2 is actually associated with other human diseases and consequently that variation in LAR2 might have pleiotropic effects. And this suggests that potentially LAR2 based treatments could be used in the future to treat other conditions beyond Parkinson's disease. Now to address this question, we sequenced the LAR2 gene, the entire LAR2 gene, all 51 protein coding exons, in 14,000 people that comprise 12 different non-Parkinson's disease uh, conditions and some population controls. Overall, we identified 739 single nucleotide variants. That's one every 20 base pairs. And of these, 316 are novel exonic variants, including five nonsense mutations and 210 non-synonymous variants. Among individuals of European origin, we observed that 62% of these variants are private to a single individual. Now this detailed study of LAC2 is actually part of a larger study of 202 prospective or current drug targets. And in relation to those drug targets, LAC2 was not particularly um, differentiated. However, as a collection, these drug targets were differentiated compared to other human genes. Like the other genes that we sequenced, we observed that LAC2 is under purifying selection. That is, selection is acting to minimise the occurrence of potentially damaging variants in this gene. We also observed through comparison of amino acid sequences across 14 different mammalian species, including humans, that the central region of LAC2 is actually more conserved than the flanking regions. Now this is important because the central region of LAC2 includes, includes the enzymatic domains one of those being the kinase domain, which is currently where um, LAC2 inhibitors are having their compound target interaction. So we observed increased evidence of conservation in this area across species, and we also observed evidence in humans of increased effect of purifying selection on the central region. Now this goes some way to explaining why pathogenic mutations that cause Parkinson's disease in humans tend to cluster in this central region. So we identified, we didn't identify any um, statistically significant genetic associations with the 12 diseases that we studied for LAR2. However, we identified 17 carriers of pathogenic mutations that can cause Parkinson's disease. But none of the individuals that carry these mutations actually had Parkinson's disease at the time they were clinically accessed. It's possible they have Parkinson's disease now. What was particularly interesting among these carriers of pathogenic mutations was that six of them carried a mutation that has only previously been observed in Asia. And this suggested to us that potentially, because we were looking at Europeans, that potentially carriers of this mutation, and this mutation in, in particular, may have originated independently in Asia and Europe. So to look at this in more detail, we use genome-wide SNP data and principal components to map the geographical origin of these individuals. And we found that they all originated from Northwestern Europe, which was suggested that our original premise that this mutation occurred has occurred, arisen more than once in Europe and in Asia independently was actually correct. So in conclusion, We've conducted the most detailed genetic characterization to date of LAC2. All the variants we've identified have been submitted to DBSNP and have provided us supplemental information for this manuscript. We hope that they will be of benefit and used to future genetic studies of LAC2. And while we did not identify any novel genetic associations that might suggest LAC2 therapies in the future might be beneficial for treating other diseases beyond Parkinson's disease, we did, using a number of different approaches, 
show how um, next generation sequencing can be exploited to re reveal fundamental characteristics of clinically important genes such as LARC2. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the manuscript. <laughs>